Good evening. Good evening. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Unconstructed Bible Talk. Guys, hello. Welcome hey. back. <laughs> yeah. We took a little sabbatical, much needed, um, just to kind of regroup and uh, focus. And I think there we've spoke about that on, on occasion, even here on our forum, but it's really great to see each and every one of you here this evening in our unconstructed Bible talk where we're just being transparent and real. And so this evening, um, we're going to circle back around to uh, Minister Knox, who brought a message Sunday that was quite powerful. And, um, you know, I always like to find out from the source how the uh, message was revealed to you for, for Sunday. Well, it really, a uh, message came from a place of where our church body, our uh, pastor vision um, has uh, been leading us all year. Uh, especially with us uh, trying to adapt a, a, a simple, a simple uh, uh, a way of doing church business. But <clears throat> there's a lot of, uh, I don't want to say frustration, but there's a lot of chaos right now. And the chaos I'm talking about is that there's a lot of things going on in our, our little uh, body that we have there at Rivertown. It's a lot going on. Um, and I just feel like um, we're being tested. We've been tested. Our faith has been tested. Our trust has been tested. Mm -hmm. Our en endurance has been tested. And uh, uh, people don't like to hear that, that God tests us. And see, he's testing us now. Yes. I'm, I'm, when I get a break, I'm going to fix that one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, uh, being tested. And, and uh, uh, if you look at some of the stories um, uh, in the Bible, Job is one of the, the, the main one where mm -hmm. Job didn't do anything. But God tested Job because uh, he knew uh, entrusted Joe's faith, and uh, and and so um, that's where it came from. It came from that as a church body, we're doing some good things, and uh, and we're being uh, tested for the great things that are about to come. And so I wanted the, the body to know that uh, God was up to something good because just before you get a breakthrough. Mm -hmm. There's all kind of uh, chaos, and you can use different words. Some people like it. Um, it's, it's messy. Uh, it's chaotic. It is uh, a lot of changes, uh, and 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 sometimes we get right to God's get right to that breakthrough, and we give up. I just don't want us to give up. I wanted us to know that God was up to something good because when God is about to do something in your life. That's when Satan attacks us, uh, it tries to distract us, tries to frustrate us, tries to make us turn when God's trying to get us to go straight. Uh, and so I just wanted to, as a body, the things that we've been doing, and it's just uh, a handful of people, but if we stay focused and we keep pushing forward, uh, we'll see what God was trying to do, lead, and guide us to. Um, but uh, yes, God is up to something good. Yes. I love the title even in itself, God is up, up to something good. Um, you know, just, uh, you know, in saying that, you, you began with a particular passage and you use the words in that passage 
um, to even begin uh, with that. You want to share that scripture and those beginning words, you know, that, mm -hmm. that you used to kind of set us up tonight. Uh, yes, and uh, the, the familiar uh, verse came out of Romans 8, 28. And I had uh, Minister Esther to read uh, the portion before it, but the key verse was simply Romans 8, 28, when it says, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him and who have been called according to his purpose, not ours. Mm -hmm. And the key words out of that, that came out of that, one was, and we know. Two was change of plans because of uh, uh, um, the part that says for the good of those who love him. Sometimes it's not our plans, but it's mm -hmm. God's plans that needs to be focused on. And then the other one was uh, uh, you're in good hands. Uh, mm -hmm. and, it's, and that is the last part of that verse for God, for the good of those who love him who have been called according to his purpose. And that simply means that when you put yourself in God's hands, you're in good hands. Yes, yes. And and Minister, Minister Esther, I know that you read the, the scripture itself, but when you hear um, that particular scripture being, being read, is there... Um, any particular part that really sits and resonates, you know, with you? That God does have a plan for us, but sometimes getting to that end result, mm -hmm. what God has in store for us is not easy. Mm -hmm. And as Minister Knox said on Sunday, God presents us with detours because sometimes mm -hmm. we're not ready for what he has in store for us. Look at the Israelites. They roamed around the desert for 40 years before they were ready. You know, and then there was um, Ruth. She certainly didn't intend to end up where she was. That was a definite detour in her life. So what happens, and we had COVID. That was a detour for the world. It just said, stop right here. Don't go any further. Right. Nice. Right. And so, Pastor, when when God allows these detours, right, in his sovereignty, he allows certain detours. Um, is it important that we're able to take on a, a, a different mindset to be able to handle those detours? Because um, it, it can be frustrating and challenging to be going this way and it's going real well. And then all of a sudden it's like, I got, wait, I got to go around the mountain instead of just straight through it. But how important is our heart and our mind to be able to handle those detours that Minister Esther was just talking about? It's, it's very important, and it's important for a number of reasons. <clears throat> One is, uh, Minister Knox mentioned earlier that, um, you know, that God changes our plans. Mm -hmm. uh, we've come into it expecting one thing, and then God does something entirely different. Um, and sometimes God is testing us to see if we truly believe in him and we truly trust him. So it's important because when we do it God's way, it works out so much better. When we do it God's way, God already knows what the end result is going to be. So the important thing for us to do is to step into God's plan of action and not try to pull God into our plan of action. Because ultimately God knows 
the beginning, he knows the middle, and he knows the end. So with our finite mind, we may know the beginning. Mm -hmm. We may have some sort of idea of what the middle is going to be. But in, in actuality, we know what we want the end result to be. But we truly don't have a clue as to what the end result is going to be. And I thought, I thought it was really interesting how Brother Knox pulled in the fact of, our, of, of us getting a musician. I, you know, we, we've been praying, right. we've been fasting, Yes, <laughs> we all were giving up hope. Um, folks said, well, you know, if you had a musician, we'd come back and sing because we don't want to sing to that pipe in music. <laughs> and we went for months, well, actually, what, six, seven months, really, without a musician mm -hmm. from January until we got uh, the musician in uh, the last Sunday in uh, in June, I believe it was. So, and to be honest with you, I'm I'm human just like everybody else. I I had almost reached the point where I was giving up. I said, well, it's just not going to happen. So let me go ahead and see what kind of pipe in music we can get and go from there. But at the when when everything seemed to be done and over with we ended up with the musician but it was only in god's time now had we not stepped into god's plan we wouldn't have the musician that we have today mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so and and ultimately and god brought us a great musician yes he, did. he didn't just give us anything god no. gave us a great musician yes so yes. And we were getting ready to follow. We were just getting ready to give up on the musician thing and make our own path right there. You know, right. okay, I'm not seeing where God's doing anything here. So we'll just do what we have to do, do what we think we need to do. But that's like the sheep telling the shepherd which way to go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the sheep is supposed to just follow the sh wherever the shepherd leads and mm -hmm. trusting in the shepherd. Mm. and his care so mm -hmm. you have to be an obedient sheep being led by your shepherd and that's what we forget to do sometimes we we exercise that free will right make our own plans then we mess it up and run back to god help me lord please help me i, I should have never left your, your will right so we have to remember to be sheep and and when with with that statement you know, trusting the shepherd's um, voice, being okay <laughs> with, as, as Pastor said, um, months and months <laughs> of praying, fasting, and asking, and getting <laughs> word out, and... <laughs> Everything except wearing fat cloth. Everything. <laughs> Everything. And then God said, okay. So it is is that is that part of a test to see were we willing to, mm -hmm. to wait for God? Mm -hmm. That's what you were talking about earlier, Minister Knox, about the test. Yes. Uh, people don't like for you to say it, but it does because God has to see where our heart is. Yeah, he, he knows. He knows when we're true and genuine in love with him. But then just like a good parent, you, you test your children true. and you test where their hearts are in the mm -hmm. things. And it's a simple test. They just say, uh, you tell your kids, you know, you need to make your bed up or you need to get up, you need to make your bed up, you need to uh, come downstairs, do this, you know, maybe just get a bowl of, you know, cereals, milk, and then your te you test them is to see if they clean up behind themselves or they do those things. And, and, and down the road, you reward them when they are doing it. 
and you chastise them when they aren't. Because it's, 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 it's just simple stuff. And God tests us to see where our hearts were and our willingness to um, um, be faithful to him and wait on him. And that sometimes that's hard to do as humans. It's hard to do. We're in a, especially in the 21st century, we're just used to being able to go out, get it, get it done, come back, start doing something else. And, and so uh, when we aren't able to do that instant stuff, that immediate stuff, we lose patience. And uh, faithfulness comes Faithfulness comes with not only with the work, but it comes with being patient with yourself and the people around you and God all at the same time. Mm -hmm. and, and I still feel like Saturday was a big test of our faith yeah. and, and, and trusting that somewhere down the road, God's going to use that moment that we uh, open ourselves, not only to our, our, our building, but we open our, our hearts. We, 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 we put some guidelines which needed to be put there, but I'm saying we open our hearts and we opened up uh, our, our building to uh, allow God to work. Where we know that there was some that came that, you know, um, on church scores. Mm -hmm. But I I did not get a negative vibe. I did not get a negative response mm -hmm. when it was all said and done. Matter of fact, met people, shook people's hand, thanked people, they thanked me and thank, and I'm pretty sure they did it to the rest of you for our hospitality. But that was something, and we'd be truthful about it. There was some negative feelings leading up to that. But I still say, now, God, God used that moment in, in us to allow people to see Jesus. And, and they wouldn't have not seen it. Yeah. They would not have seen it anywhere else. Yeah. And let me, for, for our viewers that are look, looking, um, I just want to kind of bring in an awareness of what we're speaking about as a very limited um, uh, number of um, members church, um, we were able to um, host an event at um, our church. And that event required us to um, think through how we could open our doors with the same number of people that we use for a, you know, smaller church, um, you know, service to, um, it, it was at least a hundred, if not a little more, um, you know, friends and family members, but the test was, um, making sure that there was effective communication, being able to to speak through, um, you know, the the process that was needed in order to, you know, move forward. But more especially, trusting God that everything that we needed would be provided, and that all we had to do was step into the moment. Trusting God, I call it pastor free fall into the Lord's hand, just free fall, trust in him completely, but being in tune, which leads back to our prayer time before, because remember, we have been praying about another initiative that we have going and formed a prayer team. So in that prayer team, we had re regular corporate prayer happening for the church and the community. And look at how God answered in real time minister esther miss knox pastor right. mm -hmm. let me say this about that and two things i want to say first i want to deal with what you all just mentioned uh when i'm going to start first off with the testing 
I think God put me to the test because he said, okay, you stand up and you're always preaching about faith. So let me see if you have the faith that you're preaching about or if you're just standing there blowing smoke. So it was a test of my faith when it came to the musician because I had talked to at least three other people and none of the other three came through. So God, I feel I took that personal that God was truly tested my faith as a pastor. <laughs> uh, if you're gonna stand before people and preach, then you need to believe what you're preaching. And I need to know that you believe what you're preaching. I'm gonna come through for you, but I'm gonna put you to a test. I'm going to put you to a test. Now back to what you all just finished talking about. <laughs> It had been a month since we talked about how God, through Jesus, took two fish and five loaves of bread and fed 5,000 men, not counting the women and the children. So let me make it clear what we're, talk what, what we're talking about when we talk about what just happened. We had, for the first time since I've been at Rivertown, a completely full church of people. So much so until I, I thought at one time we were going to have to start putting people in the little, in our choir hall. That's how full it was. So what the Linda is talking about is, and I, I don't want to put an exact number on there, but probably less than ten people coming together and providing for a church full of people. There was no social distancing. <laughs> every pew was full, every pew was packed. But we had preached how God, how G God through Jesus fed the multitude of people. So God said, okay, if y'all gonna preach it, let me see if you believe it. <laughs> if you if you preach that, I'll I'll take a minimal amount and magnify and, and and multiply it so that it will feed yes. the multitude and have some left over. And I didn't say, but I bet you there were some left over. Mm -hmm. That's how God works. That's how God works. Yeah. So for us at Rivertown. We may be small in membership, but we're large in mission. Yes. So yeah. is it really a test when you know that you know that God is going to come through? No, it's not. We, we talked about that when there, there's no hope when you know that what is coming is coming for sure. Mm -hmm. Hope is where you uh can't see the results and you can't see the end but you have absolutely trust and hope in what god can do and that's Cause different because you've already experienced it yes mm -hmm. yeah and you know it faith is the substance of that hopeful Thank <laughs> <laughs> yes, and and I I I want to I want to kind of stay right there where you were um, mentioning, brother and and pastor, feeling and knowing that from something that could have been chaotic, um, challenging. Um, there's so many adjectives I guess we could put on on that because the back end story of leading into Saturday um, and all of the underlying currents that were in each of our lives that we were personally dealing with mm -hmm. in conjunction with still needing to, to show up 
you know, let, let's, let's talk about that a little bit because, you know, I don't want anybody looking at us when we're on here going, ah, y'all ain't like us. Y'all don't go through the stuff we go through. Ah, I mean, you know, cause it's easy, it's easy for that to be said because of what is seen on the outside, the positivity of how we choose to believe and choose to operate um, because faith changes your perspective, not by the circumstance, because the circumstance. <laughs> so I, I, I'm gonna let you guys kind of take and run with that just to kind of break it down and let's make it bite size that you know what you see there's still layers there's still layers to us as human beings and what we're dealing with all right well, we'll let each one of us because we all we all have something so they can understand that what we've been talking about is that we live it meaning that um um my wife had uh to be taken to the emergency room because uh, she had signs of a stroke. Uh, you wouldn't know that looking at her right now. Uh, my daughter uh, spent over a week in the hospital and we talking about leading up prior to this weekend and uh, in severe pain. Uh, uh, God has seen her through that and and they, they figure out what was going on but god 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 seen us do that that she's back at work um uh, and waiting to go uh, to a primary doctor for a follow-up but she's here she's doing well and uh, uh i have a co-worker who two weeks ago um maybe a little longer got diagnosed with uh cancer and she had multiple lesions in, on the inside, uh, two in the stomach, one on the liver, one on the lungs, and uh, um, was rushed to the hospital. And uh, they started immediately, started um, chemo, and uh, she's back at work. Uh, the knots that we could physically see on her body are uh, reduced to, uh, to the point that if you didn't know what we knew and just saw her, you wouldn't, you couldn't see them now. And so uh, I'm just saying she's got a she's got a year of treatment, but I'm saying how prayer, because that's what we've been doing, corporate prayer. We've been praying and we've been doing um uh, speaking uh of things as not as they are, but as uh, they will be because we claim in the victory in all of these cases that God's going to um, do miraculous things because uh, God's still in the miracle business. And uh, we believe that. So y'all can say, y'all can tell the, the viewers some of the things that's going on in your life that, you know, yet we're still trust, we're trusting in God, but we're still faithfully working and doing his will here on earth. Yeah, and for me, uh, my wife had been diagnosed and said that uh, she had to go into the hospital. Matter of fact, let me just give an update. She went into the hospital, had surgery yesterday, and uh, was released from the hospital this morning uh, and is back home now. I had a wonderful surgeon that came in and performed the surgery and She's back up and, and well, she's recuperating at home. So uh, the point is, coming up to what all was happening Saturday, I was dealing with the fact that my wife was preparing for surgery, major surgery, I might add. It wasn't just a little overnight. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a little in and out thing. She had major surgery so much so that she had to spend the night and make sure that everything was going well with before they allowed her to come home. So I was we were dealing with that. The church knew about it because my wife had come to church uh, two Sundays before and announced it. 
and boy, let me tell y'all something. Prayer is an amazing thing. There were two people that prayed for and over my life. Well, everybody, let me put it this way. Everybody within their heart was praying. But we had two people that speak to, to speak to God. <laughs> and boy, you could almost feel the earth shake. So, and I'm gonna name who it was, it was Belinda and Dwayne. Both pray with us and for us. Amen. God um, allowed, enabled my wife to go through the surgery and come out of it. And she's up walking around today. Prayer changes things. So don't ever think that it does. Amen. It was, I don't want anybody to think it was just minor surgery. It is not, it was not minor surgery. And then another thing that nobody knows anything about my my one of our daughters went missing while I was at the funeral. When I got off the phone, I had probably 10 calls trying to figure out where my daughter was. And God brought her back safely Thanks. and sound. So it, we, we went through some things, but God made it possible for it to work out. Um, God takes the bad and brings something good out of it. So you know, life isn't, it wasn't just all peaches and cream. Amen. 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 Um, you know, th this this past week for our family <clears throat> was was um was challenging in terms of, you know, two loved ones who were passed and and were being funeralized um you know so that in itself um I'm always concerned about my mom and Dwayne knows you know I call and give him regular updates in terms of that but she's a warrior um and um uh, and um and and was fine in the midst of that one of um my dear friends who suffers with sickle cell had a pain crisis and the pain crisis was so severe that um, she honestly did not know if she would survive. Mm -hmm. And um, prayer works, prayer works. Um, the mass shooting that we witnessed on the TV, my godson is a police officer in the Hampton area and was a part of that um, manhunt um and that um that is a not so good feeling um you know when you know you you hear of the type of um I don't even know what you call it that you can just kill somebody at gunpoint um you know mental 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 ease, mental um, challenges. Um, but in the midst of, you know, dealing with um, those challenges, you know, you still got to show up and do God's work. You still got to, you got to, you, you got to be able to, as you said, pastor, we talk about faith, but we have, we have to, as Christians, exercise the faith all he said is the size of a mustard seed, so so tiny you almost can't even see it, Minister Esther. But that's all that he asked us to have is faith, so that we understand it is not our will, but it is the will of God working and operating through us. That if His Word says mm -hmm. He's a healer, He's a healer. Mm -hmm. Word says that he will reconcile those that have been lost. Then we need to believe that. And we need to have our doors open so that when the reconciliation moments happen, there's a place for our brothers and sisters to come home to. And that's what on Saturday, come home and how... 
you can call it ironic. You can tell me if I'm if I'm being out of, out of order. Pass, tell me. We had homecoming on Sunday. Homecoming. And you spoke about that, Minister Knox. Home going and homecoming intertwine. Rivertown has some work to do, mission work in the community. And God is allowing us to see with the faith the size of a mustard seed. That's all we need mm -hmm. and to believe it. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, Minister Esther. Mm -hmm. And I would say, for those of us who know God, when we're faced with a difficult situation or a closed door, we have the faith to instead of asking God why we're going through this, mm. that we just pray. Because we know that if we, he answered us, we wouldn't understand anyway. <laughs> like it says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways. You know, we're just not ready for that kind of truth. So we can ask. Mm -hmm. What are you trying to teach me through this? What should I be getting out of this? Yeah. Or who's going to benefit from this? Because sometimes we go through things for the benefit of others. Yes. But it's still God working in that every circumstance, even if it's painful to us, it's going to benefit somewhere down the line, either you or somebody else. Because, you know, we serve a God who's bigger than our most pressing problems. And he's yeah. going to see us through from beginning to end so we can lean in and lean on him whenever we feel detoured. Yes. And he'll put us on the right path. Yes. Can I, can I speak to that? I don't know if I'm going to. I just want to speak to that homecoming and home going. Mm -hmm. I, feel, I feel a need to speak to that. Mm hmm and what I want to start out by saying is don't wait until it's a homegoing service before you come back to Rivertown. Come back to Rivertown as a homecoming when we can show you love, when we can show you compassion, when we can show you that we truly care about you rather than in other words, we want to see you yes. rather than to view you. Yes. Because when we see you, we have a chance to interact with you. When we view you, all we have the opportunity to do, to do is to speak over you. We want to show you the love that Rivertown had. Now, don't get me wrong. We're not going to turn a deaf ear. We're not going to say no. We're going to do what God calls us to do. But we would rather have you at a homecoming than a home going. Because your homecoming means that you're coming home to Rivertown to be with family, to be appreciated, to be loved. Homegoing means that your body lifelessly passes through Rivertown. And my mother always said, give me my flowers while I can smell them. At a homecoming, you can smell the flowers. At a homegoing, you don't even know the flowers are there. That was good. That was good and very relevant and very needed. Um, Rivertown's doors are always welcome. And Pastor, I want to say this directly to you that I thank you again for just your leadership, you know, with um, being present. You are a very present 
asked her shepherd to allow us to um, see what leadership looks like. And I think we don't get to see that enough in our world. Um, not always trying to have it so together that we can't see what you go through, but to allow us to see that going through it, um, you know, even even with the knocks and the bumps and the and the challenges, that the focus is always on what the word says, and that you know you taught us how to lean on each other for the support as well. And so I just want to say thank you for that. We need that. So um, I, I just, I, I, I need you to know that. Sometimes I don't know if, uh, if when you're in leadership, you understand the impact that you have. And um and 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 we and I'm sure that Minister Knox and uh, Minister uh, Esther will, you know, concur with that. Is that um, and probably them at a whole different level because I I can only imagine from the preaching perspective it can get a little. Mm -hmm. When pastors say do what pastors say do, you got to do it. Do, and it. do it well, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. amen to that <laughs> he always says we putting pressure on him to step up but it's it's the other way around he brings it and so you can't have step <laughs> but you know it, when we, as we're talking about having our doors open and 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 um and welcoming um friends and family into the fall to, to um, you know, in a homecoming environment. It's important that, you know, leadership is prepared and ready for whatever happens. Because brother, you spoke about it. The chaos is real. The stuff that's happening out there in the world that, that people are having to endure and work through, um, the disbelief uh, because the word is being twisted mm -hmm. and, 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 and uh, they're being given detours in life um, on purpose just so that they will do what somebody else wants, wants yep. you to do and be the way they want you to be and all of those types of things. Um, you know, that's, that's, um, that's real. That is absolutely real. Um, so what do we say? How do we encourage someone? The pastor's made a heartfelt plea. Don't wait for a home going, for your homecoming. What do we say to someone that says, but I've been gone for so long. I don't know. You know, I don't know how to do this church thing no more. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know how to do that. I'm, I'm out of place. The best way is one of the things and that we love about our pastor is that he's not <clears throat> demanding us to come look in a certain way. When he says, come as you are, he means come as you are. We, we're we not putting, uh, you you know, you ain't got to wear a suit and tie, just come. You don't, you don't have to wear uh, a, 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 a hat and long dress, whatever. Come, because we can't, we can't help you until you come. When you come, then we can help you. And But we need you to come as you are because we are open to let you know that we're flawed too. I think he used that word a lot. We're, we're flawed too. Uh, we weren't always saved. We weren't always uh, looking up and, and being faithful to God. We weren't always that, you know, what we are today. We are who we are now because we did uh, 
uh, turn our lives to, to Christ. And because of that, then we were able to accomplish uh, what we have now. And, but it, it started, you got to start somewhere. Quit trying to wait till your life is perfect. That's what a lot of them are doing. I messed up, I'm screwed up, and I, I've gone out there, I've strayed, and I can't come back. Yes, you can. You look all through the Bible, you will see prophets, you see ministers that were flawed, but then God used them for his purpose. And that's all we're trying to do. You got to come in so we can help you find your purpose. When you find your purpose in Christ, there's nobody can talk you out of it. You don't, you don't have to, but you got to get there first. And to do that, you got to come. Come as you are. Nobody's going to be turning their heads. Nobody's going to be uh, turning up their nose. We're going to open you with, uh, welcome you with open arms. Glad you're here. Glad you uh, are seeking to have a better relationship with uh, God's people and God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Minister Esther, um, on Sunday, Minister Knox concluded by saying, Know that you're in good hands. Dad, dad. Know that you're in good hands. Um, again, um, I like to use that or kind of wrap our conversation around that for part of our final this evening. Know that you're in you're in good hands. Because we know that when we surrender to God, we're in his hands. Mm -hmm. So these people who have been away from church, they've just been on a detour. Mm. But that detour most likely has been planned by God. Mm. So your, your detour is actually the road you should be on to get back to God. So it's nothing fancy about coming back to church. Just get up and get dressed and get in your car and come and we will be there for you. Amen. And God will welcome you and we will welcome you with open arms and you'll be in good hands. Amen. <laughs> Amen. A couple of things about that good hands. I can't <laughs> wait. I, I, I heard, I just could hear it coming. You, we're not all state, but we're you're in good hands. <laughs> yeah. I can't wait. I, 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 that's going to come. I know it's going to come. <laughs> but I want to speak a uh, couple of things. <clears throat> let, me, let me put out this. Uh, Brother Knox said we're not, we're, we're not focusing on what you wear. I, I'm going to throw out, and, and, and yeah, I might get my hand slapped for it, I, but, but I, I feel this. I, you know, I, I go to <clears throat> Sherry, <clears throat> excuse me, I had to take Sherry to the emergency room um, Sunday night. <clears throat> and when we got there, I saw folk with pajamas on. So I've gone through the airport and I saw people in, in, in the uh, airport with pajamas on. So I, I, I'm going to throw out an invitation. If you feel comfortable in your pajamas, well, come on to church in your pajamas. You went out to the grocery store. You went <laughs> on shopping. You went on to the airport. Just make sure they cover you. That's the only thing I ask. Make sure they cover you. But but I want to see you in church. I'm not interested in what you look like on the outside. We are interested in trying to ensure that God, through the power of Jesus and the Holy Spirit, is working on the inside. And if there are any changes to be made, God will make the changes, not us. So I just thought I'd throw that out there. Then, and here's the other thing I want to throw out. And then I said I wasn't going to talk much tonight, but here I go. You hear us use the term abundant river town abundant life united methodist church we're not talking about how much money you have in your pocket 
Some folks say, well, I'm not going to church because I can't tithe the way other people do. Nobody is going to be counting how you, that's between you and God. So if that's what's holding you back, and if you think we, when we talk about abundance, we're talking about money and money only, let me assure you, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about abundant life, relationships, uh, prosperity in what, you, what, what God has equipped you to do. Abundance in the fact that we will show unconditional or as much as humanly possible unconditional love to you. Abundance in the fact that we will be compassionate as we can be humanly be. Abundant in the fact that we are going to care for you regardless of who you are, regardless of where you come from, regardless of what the world says about you. We're going to care about you because the abundant life we're talking about is abundant life in Jesus Christ. Allowing Jesus to fill the negative and make it positive. Allowing Jesus to fill the emptiness and replace the void with a personal relationship. Allowing Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit to take away from you the negativity that the world has placed on you and show you your worth and your value in God's name because you're created in his image. That's the abundance that we're talking about. It doesn't have anything with what kind of car you drive or how, what kind of house you live in. That's not what we're talking about. We want you to have the abundant life of Jesus Christ. That's where you know that you are loved. That's where you know that you are worthy. That's where you know that you are chosen by God and God himself. That's the abundance we're talking about. And will God add the other to it? Most assuredly, he will. As, as Minister Knox said Sunday, if you do your part, we guarantee you God will do his part. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't talking much tonight mm -mm. <laughs> guys thank y'all so much for um for just sharing um you know i think it's important when we gather to um to keep it real to keep it to keep it real minister esther i saw you coming on did you have have something you wanted to say i better not no <laughs> no yes please <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> uh, uh, i like to end with Simply the, the, the verse, Romans 8, 28, starts off, it says, and we know. And, 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 and we know means we don't guess and we don't wish. We know. And in that knowing, there is faith, there is trust, and there is hope in Christ. Just have to have a relationship with him. Amen. Amen. Thank you for sharing. And um, we want to make sure that anyone that is looking knows how to connect with us. Also, how to um, join us and the opportunities that we have for them to join us in fellowship and Bible study. Um, and also to speak with you, Pastor, as well. There are a number of ways you can join us. First and foremost, we would love to see you. We would love to see your face in the place. Mm -hmm. uh, 9325 Rivertown Road. Our worship service has been changed to 12 noon. That gives you plenty of time to do whatever you need to do. 
and still get to church. I do ask that if you come, be on time. But 12 noon, um, we worship, and, and not only are we in person, but we also on Facebook. And it's okay to view us on Facebook. But at, at least one Sunday out of the month, give God your principle. That's all I'm saying. Uh, Bible study every Wednesday at uh, 6 30, uh, unless uh, something comes up and we'll announce it if it does. Uh, the link for Bible study, if you go on rivertownumc.org, uh, the link, if you pull up Rivertown online and you go on the rivertownumc.org, you will find the link for Bible study. We're beginning uh, the study of the book of Romans this tomorrow night. Um, try us. Uh, don't be afraid. We don't look for you to come being a scholar. We just come for you to look, to learn more about Jesus, God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and then has your relationship with him. Uh, and of course, I give this number out now. I haven't had many people to take us up on it, but 681-533-0236 is the number. And after we finish up tonight, I'm going to ask uh, uh, the panelists if they will call that number to make sure it's valid. If it's not, I will get it back in service. But 681-533-0236. We don't answer. If I don't answer, leave me a message. Look, those are the ways that you can unite with us. Uh, and we are a mission-driven church. So don't come thinking that all you're going to do is sit around. We'll find a mission for you to work with. And if you have a mission in mind, bring it to us and we'll see if God will help us fulfill it. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you guys again for joining. Thank all of our viewers for joining us. We look forward to hearing from you through the week at any of those opportunities to connect. And then again, next week, right here on Unconstructed Bible Talk. Good evening. And Pastor, what do we say? Oh, just a little nugget that we add to our closing. And that is, we love you. And hey, nothing you can do about it. Be blessed and have a blessed <laughs> Good night. Good night. Good night.